Okay, so here's what comes in the package. And this says it's compatible with all Pro Series, Elite Series, Town and Travel Series, and Commercial Series. Um, I'm assuming that that means anything with the digital readout like this, which as far as I know, that's just about everything, unless you have a real old one. Um, basically, it's just the guts here. You're replacing your um, original temperature, and then it has two probes and then two outlets for the probes. Everything else looks exactly the same. And there's a button for probe selection. Last but not least, it comes with an instruction book. And you're, if you're a typical man, you can just go ahead and throw this away. Okay, for this really easy install, you just need a few tools. You need a Phillips screwdriver. You'll need a small flathead screwdriver. Um, I'm using three different kinds, and you'll see why in later in the video. A pair of wire clippers, and then a couple of zip ties when you're all finished. Well, let's get started. All right, so not much to pull on this thing off. You just need a Phillips screwdriver. There's two screws. Um, and they're just threaded into the metal. Now the instructions say to access everything from the bottom of the pellet cabinet. So I'm gonna go under there and see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna stick my finger through the front here so you can see. This is where we just took out the control panel. Um, there's a bunch of wires here. And then these are the four connections that you're after. Um, for the new one, so we need to cut these zip ties that are kind of holding this group of wires together. Okay, so here's one, two, make sure you don't cut the wires because that would be a problem, and three over here. Okay, now that the bottom is loose, just take this panel and we're going to push it through this opening here. and pull it through the bottom. Okay, so once that's through, that gives you lots nicer access to this cluster of wires right here, which is what you're after. And you can see that here's the new controller. This is the old controller. Um, it's all the same colors, wires, so it should just be plug and play and should be good after that. You will want to have a flat screwdriver. These are locking little plugs, so you do need to stick something down in there to get them to uh, free up. Easiest way I've found is to put one on each side and it'll slide out. And I think the easiest way is probably to do this one at a time. That way you don't get these mixed up. So I've just removed the purple and white. And now I'm just going to put the purple and white from the new one back on. Okay, this last one is up here. There's not a lot of slack on it. And I'm not going to be able to take a picture and do it at the same time, but same kind of connection. Um, and your colors will still match up with the new one. Our last connection step is we need to take these RTD wires right here, the two white ones, and just use a flathead and just remove those. And it does say that you can put these back in any order. Um, I'm going to put them back the way they are in there just because. And it's just a block terminal. So when you tighten that screw down, it'll hold that, it just pinches it down. Alright, there we go, we're all hooked up. And for future reference, you do have a fuse block right here. So if for some reason you can't get your uh, digital readout to come on and your trigger's not working, always want to check that first because that's the easiest fix. Okay, so now that this is all put together, we're just gonna do this in reverse. So we're gonna come up through the back here. Put our screws back in.
Before I zip tie all my wires back up in there, I'm going to power it on and make sure that I've got power. Okay, here goes nothing. Success. I can hear my auger kicking on right now. So last but not least, we're just going to zip tie all those wires back together and we should be good. Alright, looks like we're good. We're smoking. Now I'm going to give it, uh, the probes a test. Okay, for those of you who did not know, this little hole right here in the side of your grill is actually to put a probe through. So if you've never used a probe before, you just feed it through here into your grill. My grill is a disaster right now, so I apologize for that. And then you just take your end, put it right here in the probe. Do the same to the other. Once you get your two probes hooked up, there's a probe selector button. And that will let you scroll. It says PO1. That will let you scroll to see what temperature each is at. And that will stay on for a few seconds and then it will flash back to your grill temperature.